Homo sapiens, who are we? Where did we come from? In chapter four, we will continue our quest to learn more about the family tree Homo with the help of paleoanthropology. Traveling from six million years forward to five million years in the past, we will cross from the Miocene epoch into the Pliocene epoch. We will seek to illuminate the nature of some of our most ancient ancestors with a look at the fossil record. Our quest now takes us back to Eastern Africa. In chapter two, we looked at Sahelanthropus chadensis in Chad and Aurorantugonensis in Kenya. We will now turn our attention to Ethiopia with a look at the genus Artipithecus. Artipithecus will take us from the late Miocene into the Pliocene epoch at 5.8 to 5.3 million years in the past. Let's continue our quest with a trip to the middle Awash River Valley in northeastern Ethiopia in Africa. The Middle Awash River Valley is located in the Afar Depression, a geological feature which is part of the Great Rift Valley system of eastern Africa. In this dry, desolate desert region, paleoanthropologists have made some key discoveries which have helped to further illuminate our family tree. Between 1992 and 2002, a group of researchers led by Tim White of the University of California, Berkeley, discovered fossils of an ancient hominin which they called Artipithecus. Two species were found, Artipithecus rambidus and Artipithecus cadaba. Artipithecus cadaba lived around 5.6 million years in the past. Artipithecus rambidus lived around 4.4 million years in the past. Artipithecus cadaba is an important ancient ancestor because it appears in the time frame of the human chimpanzee genome split. Somewhere between seven million years ago and five million years ago, we would find the last common ancestor of the chimpanzee line and the line of our human ancestor. Recent genetic research points to the genome split between chimpanzee and our human ancestor occurring around 6.3 million years ago. This genetic research points to a second surprising conclusion. Around 5.3 million years ago, there was crossbreeding between the chimpanzee line and the line of our human ancestor. This crossbreeding led to the creation of a hybrid line that was genetically viable. This hybrid line gave rise to the line of our human ancestor. This second division in the genome of humans and chimpanzees left its mark on the genome of our human ancestors in the form of the female sex chromosome X, which is about 1.2 million years younger than our other chromosomes according to the evolutionary clock. What role Artipithecus plays in the story of the human chimpanzee genome split may be revealed in future research. The fossils of Artipithecus cadaba consist largely of teeth, fragments of the lower jaw, pieces of the forearm, finger bones, a collar bone, and a toe bone. To the untrained eye, these fossils may seem to hold little of interest, but to a paleoanthropologist, they reveal insights into the lifestyle of one of our ancient ancestors. Teeth, in particular, can be very informative. They can give us information on diet and social adaptations. Finger bones can tell us about their hands and how they use them. Toe bones can tell us whether an animal is adapted for climbing or walking. From an appearance standpoint, Artipithecus cadapa was about the same size as a modern chimpanzee. It probably walked upright part of the time, but was still an agile climber. It most likely lived in a forested environment with lakes or rivers nearby and swamp-like conditions present. Moving forward in time, we would find Artipithecus ramidus at around 4.4 million years in the past. Artipithecus ramidus displays characteristics that are transitional between chimpanzees and the later Australopithecines. The canines are smaller than chimpanzee, but larger than Australopithecines. Artipithecus ramidus most likely lived in a forest environment near lakes and rivers. The genus Artipithecus moves us farther down the family tree towards our own human beginnings. We will next look at the genus Australopithecus, which moves us ever closer to the beginning of our own genus, Homo. As we begin our look at the genus Australopithecus, let's review our journey so far. From 7 million years in the past to 5.7 million years in the past, we have looked at the potential human ancestors, Sahelanthropus and Aurora. 
With Ardipithecus cadaba at around 5.6 million years in the past, we begin to leave the Miocene epoch and move into the Pliocene epoch at 5.3 million years in the past. Ardipithecus rambidus moves us well into the Pliocene epoch at around 4.4 million years in the past. We begin to encounter Australopithecus at around 4.2 million years in the past. The Australopithecines are a very important relation on the family tree Homo. Let's begin our look at the genus Australopithecus on an October Saturday in 1924. It is October 11, 1924, a Saturday in Melrose, an upper-class area of Johannesburg, South Africa. Raymond Arthur Dart, the young director of anatomy at the University of Witwatersrand, is getting dressed for a wedding. He is the best man. His wife, Dora, is urging him to hurry. As he dresses, he looks out the window of his home to see two men from the South African Railway struggling up his drive with two wooden crates. It is the shipment of fossils from the Buxton Lime Quarry in Tong, South Africa that he has been expecting. Raymond's wife pleads for him to concentrate on the wedding, but as soon as she is off to get dressed, Raymond is out the door. He wrenches the top off of the first crate. It is full of cut limestone containing various fossils. Raymond is disappointed in the contents. He turns to the second crate and removes the lid. His eyes fall on an endocranial cast, a fossilized brain from the interior of a skull that he sees lying atop the contents. As he picks up the fossilized brain, Raymond can see right away that the brain is too large for a baboon or chimpanzee, yet too small to be that of a primitive man. He senses he is holding in his hands something new, something very different. He feverishly rummages through the crate to see if there is a face to fit with his brain. He finds a large rock into which the fossilized brain fits perfectly. In the rock, he can see hints of a skull. Raymond begins to realize he may have found one of the most significant discoveries in the history of anthropology. But the wedding is imminent. His friend Christo Byers, the bridegroom, implores Raymond to get dressed. Reluctantly, Raymond stores his two new treasures in his wardrobe and prepares for the wedding. The next day, he begins the arduous task of delicately extracting the skull from the rock. On December 23, 1924, 73 days after beginning the task, the rock splits open, partially revealing the skull face. It is the face of a young three-year-old hominid specimen, the dart wool chrism Australopithecus africanus, his tongs baby, as he affectionately called it. This specimen would be the beginning of proof that mankind had originated in Africa, a theory put forth by Charles Darwin. The prevailing view in the early 20th century was that mankind had originated in Eurasia due to discoveries of Neanderthal, Cro-Magnon, and Homo erectus fossils in Europe and Asia. Raymond Dart argued that Africa was the cradle of humankind. The debate continued for many years, but in the end, Raymond Dart and Charles Darwin were proven right. Africa was recognized as the birthplace of humankind. Let's begin our look at the genus Australopithecus with an overview of the fossil finds of Australopithecines in Eastern Africa. Fossils of Australopithecus have been found in Ethiopia, Kenya, Tanzania, and South Africa. In the last few minutes, we looked at the discovery of the Tong child in South Africa by Raymond Dart. The Tong child is dated at 2.5 million years in the past. In 1974, Mary Leakey discovered fossils of Australopithecus afarensis in Tanzania, which dated to 3.8 million years in the past. In 1997, Maeve Leakey discovered fossils of Australopithecus anamensis in Kenya at Kanapoi, which dated to around 4 million years in the past. In 1974, Donald Johansson discovered fossils of Australopithecus afarensis in Ethiopia dated to around 3.2 million years in the past. Johansson christened his fossil find Lucy after the Beatles song Lucy in the Sky with Diamonds. The genus Australopithecus covers a time span from around 4.2 million years in the past forward to around 2 million years in the past. The Australopithecines ranged all across eastern Africa from present-day Ethiopia to South Africa. The Australopithecines represent a key evolutionary link in our quest to discover the beginnings of Homo sapiens. In Chapter 5, we will continue our look at the family tree Homo and the role played by the Australopithecines in this epic tale.